I want to turn to the war between Israel and Hamas in, in Gaza. What is your view of this war? I think when you call it a war, you're doing a disservice to the people who are having their limbs blown off by some of the most advanced technical weaponry on the planet. It is a genocide and it is disgusting. And it doesn't matter which side of the political spectrum you fall on. When you observe a genocide in front of your very eyes, you should be disgusted. Which side is waging genocide? The Israelis are genociding the Palestinians and you know it as well as everybody else does. I don't know that. Well, then it seems like your bosses are not allowing you to know it. What do you think of of what Hamas did on October the 7th? Why are you starting the story in the middle? I didn't. I just asked you about the wider war. I'm now asking I can't you specifically about Hamas. I cannot professionally answer that question without talking about the context that led up to October 7th. Well, nothing, to my mind, justifies what happened on October the 7th. Nothing justifies what happened before October the 7th appears. Mm. This is the exact point. So you're talking to a man. I don't know what answer you expect from me, because mm. let's forget the fact that I'm a Muslim. You're talking to a man who is fighting oppression to the best of his ability because he believes that the people in charge of the world are enslaving us all to the point where I detriment my own life. I end up in a jail cell because I'm speaking against oppression. Then you're asking me what I would do if my family was you're blown not in to jail. pieces. You're not in a jail. Hang you asked me not... what I would do if another government Andrew, came along and blew my family to pieces. You weren't put in a jail cell because of any oppression. Absolutely, I was. You weren't. Of course, you I were was. put in jail cell because you've been accused of serious sexual. I crimes. would not have been accused if I was not monumentally successful in speaking the truth. Let me ask. You. You're peddling asininities because I'll tell you why, Pierce. Let me answer the no, question. No, I'm not. Of course, you it's are. It's a simple question. That's like me asking. I'll tell you why I ask let, because the let, UK, let, where you were born prescribes Hamas as a terror They also prescribe me as dangerous to children in schools. Let me explain something to you, Pierce. You're not... Sure. So I'm asking you, first of all, specifically, what is your reaction to what happened on October the 7th? Sure. I'll answer the question professionally. I do not condone the loss of human life on either side. Mm-hmm. I think anybody doing anything which directly damages civilians is disgusting and abhorrent. However, I would be an amateur if I could not sit and pretend I do not understand the motivations behind either side. This is not even me taking a side. I understand why Israel is doing what it's doing. I understand why Palestine is doing what it's doing. However, I still call the Israeli actions absolutely abhorrent and genocidal. Okay, we're going to come to Israel's actions. I promise. Because question. you're the person who would have called Nelson Mandela a terrorist while he was still in jail. And one person's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter. I wouldn't for have me to answer that. the question, Yes, you would have. For, the, for me to answer the question, I have to be very professional, Pierce. For me to sit on the outside in Romania with no personal involvement in Israel-Palestine, it's easy for me to say, yes, it was an act of terror. However, if I was in Gaza, if I was in an open air prison, if my family had been annihilated by bombs from Mm. the sky, Mm. if everybody I knew had suffered the loss of a loved one, if I had no chance of any kind of freedom or democracy or standard of life, would I believe it was an act of terror or would I believe it's an act of resistance against oppression? You have to be very careful how you answer these questions. So what do you think? I think I understand what happens when you take people and put them in such an inhumane condition. For anybody to sit and say that you're going to take people and put them in absolutely inhumane conditions Mm. and give them no standard of life and they're not allowed to ever fight back or they are But I can agree with you. Anyone who does that is an amateur. I can agree with you that the plight of the Palestinians for many decades has been absolutely shameful. So what did we think was going to happen, Pierce? No, nothing justifies what happened on October the 7th. So what are they supposed to do? Nothing. So what are they supposed to do? That was an act of medieval barbaric terrorism. Nothing justifies it. Did they suffer acts of medieval medieval barbaric terrorism? Did they suffer acts of medieval barbaric terrorism before that date? Yes. And it's unfortunately an eye for an eye in this world. I'm not condoning. I'm being a professional. If I believed or if Israel believed that one of the people in your house was mm-hmm. a terrorist and decided to destroy your entire house and kill your entire family, mm-hmm. would you sit and say, well, maybe there was a terrorist inside. I accept that. Or would you be enraged? Genuine question. I don't think you can take an individual person's response. Well, it's a bunch of individual as, people in Gaza. An, yeah, They're sure. people, individuals with right, thoughts and dreams come. and aspirations Fine. which are being annihilated. 15-year-old um, girls without legs because of cruise missiles. No, let's come they to are that. individual people. Let's They're not cattle, Pierce. Let's come to that. Perspective. Because I don't understand the absolute intricacies like they do. Do you know what genocide means? Of course I do. Right. It's genocide just, means you want to eradicate an entire people based on race or ethnicity. Israel clearly doesn't want to do that 
to the Palestinian oh, clear, people. Clearly not. If he did, he wouldn't tell a million of them, as it turned out, who moved south. Now, there are arguments about whether... To they... attack them as they moved. Well, some people got hit as they moved. Oh, some people got hit. Yes. Some people got hit. You know what, You know Andrew? what happens? You know what, Andrew? Wait till it's your son, son. You know what, I... Wait till it's your I son. I agree. And you know what, Andrew? War is horrific. It's horrific. The question... Back that if they decided to cruise missile your house because mm. they thought somebody inside was a terrorist, you would not accept the loss of your family that you have raised. You would not accept that. Of course that. I wouldn't. Okay, absolutely. So, let me answer this as a professional. What's funny is, I'm a humanist. A like I said. A professional what, by the way? A prof the professional. What Please let me mean? answer. Let me answer. What are you at? What are you I'm speaking? A, you I'm say a you're professional. thinking the professional. And I'm talking about this from a humanistic perspective, mm. right? And like I said, you've talked, about pe you've talked to people more knowledgeable than me on the details of the subject. Right. Listen to me very carefully. I thought we lived in a democratic society. You just had 35,000 Hamas terrorists. And this is the thing that's most upsetting to mm. me. This is what genuinely upsets me. Israel intelligence will say a guy's a mass terrorist. Has that guy gone to a court of law? Has there been a democratic process? Has he been proven to be a terrorist? No. They've just decided from their intelligence that couldn't see an invasion coming from hundreds of miles away. So this intelligence is actually no. It's not. It's no, not no, great. No. So they've decided no, no. this person might be an intelligence without court case, without any kind of democratic process, and because of that, they've decided to annihilate civilians along with him, and it's all just collateral damage, and nobody should care. That is not a humanistic perspective. And that is disgusting. And any person in the West who cool. is advocating for that is a hypocrite. And because you, if it was turned on them, right. if, it, if the American government said, we think the person in your shopping mall, one of the people you were shopping alongside in the mall, might have committed a crime. We didn't take them to court. We think they might have. So we killed your whole family. Right. Get over it. So the last is a, time. Is a clown and a hypocrite. So the last time. What do you expect full-grown men to I'm do? I'm about to respond. What do you expect full-grown men to do when you kill all of their... I think it's a shame that we're living in the world now where people are reduced to basically suicide, mm. to try and fight for freedom for their families if they have one left. Mm. Because they all committed suicide, those men who did that. Well, the Hamas, they, didn't have a, they didn't have a chance of survival. I think when you well, that's oppress, because they that's because they believe that they're marching themselves and no, going to a better life. Because when you oppress people to the point where their family's dead and they have nothing to live for. Mm. So and you, I think that's a shame. So you, do you support Islamic fundamentalism? Absolutely not. Do mm. you support an Islamist ideology? Absolutely not. Right. What I support... Let me, ask, let me ask the question. Do you think if we gave the Palestinian people basic human rights that Hamas would find it more difficult to recruit new soldiers? Uh, I, yeah, look, I think... Probably. The, I think Probably if we treat them like humans, I think, this I, won't happen. I think the so we agree and let's move on. I think there's a real danger in the scale of Israel's response that you radicalize a whole new generation Agreed. of Palestinians. I think that's a real danger. So and perhaps, I, and so by the way, I've said that. We can agree on so that. So perhaps it was Israel's actions before October 7th that radicalized the soldiers who invaded. So you agree with me. So, so let me assure you, as someone who's not pimped women and bragged about it, the morality requires that those who rape women and kidnap women must be eradicated, not negotiated with. He says on my show, I won't be lectured on morality and toughness by Andrew Tate. His great idea of toughness and morality is pimping women and bragging about it on air and then trying to quasi walk it back while simultaneously maintaining many of the same positions and flexing his biceps. Listen, everyone should be able to tweet whatever it is they want. I'm more for an open discourse, even with people who I think are dead wrong on a lot of issues. But Andrew Tate is dead wrong on a lot of these issues. And the particularly ridiculous posturing about being a, yes, you're very tough when you want people to make peace with terrorists who just murdered their children, very, very tough. What do you say to that? So Ben is a warmonger. Ben has been wrong on basically every single issue you can name. He was with you with the vaccine and, and every other war. Ben is always calling for other people's young men to go and die in some war. He seems to love it. I don't know if he has short man syndrome, but he's always behind his desk calling about how important it is that big, strong men like me go and die. And the reason he tweeted that and said that is because when Hamas and Israel, the very early in the conflict, I think it was three days in, were discussing possible peace talks, he tweeted, no, absolutely not, fuck them, kill them all. And I said, I said, Ben, as a man who's done his own fighting, because I've had a life of pain and violence, listen to me, peace is always worth a conversation. What I said is that we should always be prepared to at least discuss peace. He, because he's a warmonger, said, no, peace is not worth a conversation. You're this, you're that, da-da. Because he's always sitting behind his desk, he must have a booster chair, and he's always running his mouth trying to invoke violence and call for war. And I find it kind of hypocritical because a man who's so small he would die if he was slapped on the street, sitting behind a desk and screaming for other people to be annihilated, I think is kind of, it's worse than I hypocritical. actually think, I believe. It's insane. I believe if he was sitting here listening to this, he would say that what he's screaming for is for Jewish people in Israel to defend themselves. And All he's a Jewish ben man. All Ben does is call for war. And I agree. 
Defending yourself. That's is, all he does. That's all he does. It's and calling right. for war and call and defending yourself is very different than genocide. And Ben, like I said, overall, most of Ben's worldviews and mine probably align. We don't align on the religious sect, and we don't rely on the religious points. Fine. But our overall worldviews about how society should function probably align on many of the key issues. I'm not a, I don't have a beef with Ben, and I don't watch his show, and I have no idea what he talks about a lot of the time. But what I do know is every time I turn it on, he's calling for someone else's son to go and die in a ditch somewhere for his interests. And I don't like people who are not advocates for peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, said Candace, who is far more intelligent than Ben will ever be. And she is completely right. He replied that rhetoric, starting an argument with me, when I said we should talk about peace. I say we should talk about peace. He calls for the death of civilians, and somehow we're asking why my point of view is seen as abstract. It's insane. Why can't we all just sit down and say the fighting must end? Why can't we do that? Why can't we sit and say, nobody should be dying, let's stop using the most advanced military weaponry on the planet to blow the limbs off children? Why can't we say that without being deemed some why kind you, of terrorist why sympathizer why, or anti-Semite? It's you, insanity. Uh, Trump came along and didn't start a single war. He's the only one who didn't. And they're going to come along him and say, make him a bad guy. When a new president comes in, it's just endless war and death and killing. Mm -hmm. Have you seen a dead body, Piers? Have you seen people lose a fucking limb? It's disgusting. I know what's happening over there. I've have seen, you seen that? I don't need to tell you about the, the, the parts of my history that I'm not prepared to share, Piers. You've but seen, you've tell, seen I people said it to Ben. I said people who have done their own fighting and seen their own violence and have seen people bleed out in the street from a stab wound are not going to be so, so smart and so quick to sit behind a desk and call for the the death of innocent people. It's disgusting what's happening. I don't want anyone to die on either side. And when I come along as a peacemaker and say, this is insane, because he's a warmonger, because he has chosen uh, blinkers and sees one side of the argument and refuses to accept the humanity of Palestinians, he says I'm a bad person for calling for peace. Well, you know why? Because he Here's, don't interrupt this, it's two sentences. I want all people to stop dying. However, I understand what is going to happen when you create a pressure cooker. That is, my, that is my answer, and it's extremely professional. I don't want anyone to die, and because I don't want anyone to die, because I'm a peacemaker, because I'm a humanist, I understand you cannot lock people in an open-air prison for an undetermined period of time without provoking... ...two years. You know, you've expressed some regret because of your turning to Islam, your change in, in your philosophy uh, from a religious perspective. You've acknowledged that some of the stuff you used to do was immoral. Do you look at the journey you've gone on here and think that in a way, notwithstanding the matrix and everything else, that maybe you yourself could have done things differently to oh, avoid absolutely. being in this position? Absolutely. I'm a man and I take absolute self-accountability. You have to, as a man, your superpower is looking in the mirror and understanding everything that happens to you, both good and bad, to a degree, is your fault. It could have all been influenced. I could have avoided all of this. I could have avoided the matrix attacks. Or sorry, I could have avoided jail cell, if you don't let me using that term. I could have avoided all the negative press. I could have chosen to work in Starbucks and just stayed nobody. I made choices that put me in this position. I take responsibility for them. I said things on the internet in a satirical way on videos that got 110 views when YouTube was brand new that I did not expect to become the most viral videos in the world because I didn't expect to become the most famous and known person on the planet. That's all true. I'm not saying I have no part to play in any of this. However, I can still say that I'm completely innocent. I can still say that it's only my fame and notoriety that has inspired the prosecution service to try and even put me in jail in the first place. I can still say that there's some unfair policing in the world depending on your political views. I can still say all of those things while accepting absolute responsibility for the situation I am in.